Have you ever wondered what happens if your Tesla loses all its power, the doors are locked, the battery's dead, maybe you're trapped inside? What if you're locked inside the front here, or maybe a first responder needs to come and save your life in an accident? In this video, I wanna show you everything. How to open the doors if you don't have any power, how to jumpstart that low voltage battery, how you get outside the trunk, maybe escape from it if the kids are locked inside it. Also, I wanna dive into Tesla's sentry mode, what it does. I wanna talk about that first responder loop, all the things you need to know and how they work. Don't get caught off guard. Let's dive right in. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Auto Tech Garage. My name is Keith. I've got in the garage with me today this 2024 Tesla Model Y. This is a dual motor setup on here. And just wanna briefly go through some of these things that we talked about. This is important information. I also wanna to mention to you here that a lot of this information is available to you through the owner's manual in Tesla's uh, on-screen display. So if you guys aren't aware that that feature is in your car, um, you can access the entire owner's manual and there's a lot of how-to stuff in there. I, I su suggest that you actually dig into that and read some of this information before you absolutely need it. All right, friends, the first thing I wanna talk about on this Tesla here is what to do if your battery is dead. Now you have two batteries in here. You got a high voltage system on it. That's the big battery, the big boy, and then we've got the low voltage battery. This is very similar to every other car where you have this 12 volt smaller battery. That 12 volt battery does some things like open the frunk for you. So if that battery is dead, this is not gonna open. There is a way to access that battery using a jumper wires that are provided underneath this front bumper. Let's take a look at that and I wanna show you what it looks like. So right here, there's a little plug on this front bumper. This is really where the tow hook belongs. You've got a tow hook in the front that will screw in thread in here. But underneath this cover, there's a couple of wires. You'll need a little pry tool like this one. You need to get in underneath here. You can pop this cover out. You see, once you've got the cover out, there's a couple of wires in here. There's a red wire and a black wire. By connecting a 12 volt source to this, it should release the frunk here. You may have to press a little on the, on the emblem in order to activate that. You hook a 12 volt source up and you should be able to release the frunk if that low voltage battery is dead. All right, the next thing I wanna point out to you here is there's always an emergency release for any kind of trunk or frunk as it is in this car because we've got the trunk in the front. And I wanna show you where that's at. Right down here, there's a button that's actually illuminated on here. Now, a lot of cars, it's required that this emergency release is some kind of cable operated device with a glow in the dark handle. So this would apply to a lot of cars, not just this Tesla, but I wanna show you what it looks like, particularly in the Tesla with a front trunk. This button will actually stay illuminated in the dark while the front is closed. Another thing I wanted to mention on here, this is probably not so important for an adult. If I were to try to climb in this thing, you'd have to be, you know, uh, some kind of mafia expert to get me in this trunk and have this thing close all the way. But if you have small kids, it's possible they could end up in here. And I think it's something that would be important for you to teach your kids if for some reason they end up in this trunk, um, how to get out and show them where that button's at and what it does. While we're underneath the trunk here in the front of the car, I'm on the passenger side in the, in the back corner of the trunk. This here is the first responder loop. The purpose of this loop is to disconnect the entire high voltage system from the high voltage battery. So once this is cut with a pair of clippers or wire cutters, you'll no, no longer have any high voltage running throughout the vehicle to be contained to the battery. And this is important for the first responders in some event that you're in an accident and they need to extract you from the vehicle. They don't wanna be worried about cutting into high voltage wires and getting electrocuted. They'll come in here, they'll snip this first and then they'll have free access to just about everything on the vehicle with the exception of the high voltage battery. Obviously that voltage will be contained within the battery unit itself, but not to all the wiring that, that spreads throughout the car. I also wanted to mention to you that if you're gonna be replacing your low voltage battery, it's required that you disconnect that during the process. Okay, so there is a plug on here. You don't need to cut it. Uh, you can just disconnect the plug on there and then plug it back in when you're done. This is just for quick access for fire department. Go ahead and snip it. They're, they're not uh, worried about replacing this loop layer, worried about saving your life. This next safety feature I wanna share with you is probably one of the most critical ones for you. In the event you're trapped inside your vehicle, maybe you accidentally put this thing in a pond or something, submerged in water, you need to know how to get out of here if you don't have any electrical power. So if you're driving a Tesla, you probably know there's a, a button on here to release the door. You'll press that button and the door should pop open. Okay, but if you don't have any power, you're not gonna be able to do that. So in front of the window switches here, there's actually a handle that you can pull up. You're just gonna go ahead and pull up hard on that handle. It's a mechanical cable that actually releases the latch. So that'll open the door for you without any power. So I'm here in the back seat and I wanna show you the feature that's available back here. 
It's a similar cable style mechanism, but it's a little bit more difficult to access. And I do recommend guys, if you've got your family in the car, you teach your kids how to do this. Just like we talked about the frunk over there, it's possible a child could get trapped in the frunk. Um, here in the back seats, chances are your children and your passengers are gonna be uh, back here, not you. So it's a good idea to teach them how to do this in the event of an emergency. Inside this door card here, there's a pocket at the bottom. At the bottom of this pocket, we're gonna pull out this rubber liner. And underneath here, there's a red tab. You're gonna wanna pull the red tab towards the inside of the door and release the cover. And then under that cover here, there's a cable with a white tab on it. So you're just gonna wanna pull that cable and you can feel the, the latch pulling from the inside. Now that we've talked about all these scenarios where your battery is dead and you'll have to get access to the frunk, you may need to get out of the car, all these types of things, I want to explain to you what to do to actually jumpstart this low voltage battery. And I want to make a quick point here. We never jumpstart the high voltage battery. If there's a problem with your high voltage battery, you need to take that in for service. We're talking about strictly the low voltage battery here. This is basically what powers up the instrument panel or the, the iPad inside the car. That's what the low voltage system is for, is to release those doors. It operates a lot of uh, auxiliary features and things. So we're strictly talking about low voltage system here. If you need to jumpstart it, um, behind this HEPA filter here, there's actually a little indication on here. You can see it's got like a plus with an arrow and you will need to fold this back to get access to the jumpstart terminal that's on here. So there's a, a battery positive terminal right here. It's indicated with a little plus on the end of the post, the stud, and you'll need to pop this cover off. And once you get the cover off, you have access to battery power. This is 12 volt battery power right here. And then you can connect your 12 volt jump start source on there. I recommend you use some sort of an external jump box. I'll put a link in the video below to the one that I like to use. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second, but use a, an external source when jump starting electrical vehicle. Uh, don't don't try to jump from another vehicle. I don't think that's recommended by the manufacturer. So we've got your positive connection here, and then you want to connect your negative cable right here. You just need to find a good ground point. Tesla recommends using this spot here in particular. Um, this bolt threads right into the body, which is going to be grounded. The next safety item I wanted to talk about here is what you should do in the event you get a flat tire. You know, most of these Tesla products, they don't come with a spare tire. These are also not run flat tires, like a Corvette might be or something. It's not something you can continue to drive on. So Tesla has an option for you in their website. You can buy one of their tire inflator and sealer kit. It's basically a, a bag of sealer. You squeeze through the valve stem and then you'll use their compressor, battery powered compressor in order to inflate the tire the proper pressure. And then you continue on to a service center as soon as you can to get that tire repaired or replaced. So I also think it's important that you have a tire plug repair kit. This is something also you could get on Amazon. I'll put a link to something down in the comments below. Get yourself a tire plug repair kit. If you're traveling cross country, you might be 50 miles from the nearest town at least. I think it's important that you um, learn how to plug a tire. As a matter of fact, I'll probably make a video about that, how to do that. Um, but it's important that you put a plug in. Tesla only recommends that you fix a tire up to a six millimeter hole. But if you can do that on the side of the road effectively, put the sealer in it, air it up, and get you down to the next town, that'll, that'll be something worth doing. I also want to mention to you that Tesla tires are very unique. They have a insulated tire. They put foam inside the tire to reduce the road noise. You don't have any engine noise in a Tesla. So what they want you to do is put these uh, insulated tires in there to help reduce some of the road noise. So you need to make sure you understand Tesla tires are different. They're not a standard tire that you can put on here. They also have a higher load rating. These cars are fairly heavy because of the electric battery in them and electric motors. So they've got extra weight. There's a lot of load on the tires due to the torque of the electric motors. And it's not recommended that you replace with a standard tire. You wanna look for a tire that has a T on it. They'll have a T0, T1, or T2, depending on the generation of the tire, I believe. So make sure you have something rated for hybrid. It's extra load capacity rated for the weight of this vehicle. The last feature of a Tesla, which I think is really nice, is Tesla's Sentry system. I'm sure you guys have seen some of this on TV where uh, we've got pictures of people moving around the car on the outside of the vehicle. There are cameras located all around the car like this one. There's one in the fender over here. There's obviously one in the back of the car, one in the front of the car, and even camera in the interior. So you're able to activate your Sentry system through your app on your phone if you're driving a Tesla. You'll need some sort of a USB storage device in order to store that data that you're using to record. So what the Sentry system does is it allows these cameras to be active 
on their own when they detect motion activity, anything near the car, and start to record what's going on around the exterior of your vehicle while it's locked up in a parking lot somewhere. A super nice feature, I believe. And uh, I think if you're not aware of it, it's worth maybe activating. It's, it's part of your security function on here. And it also ties in nicely with the security system where if the vehicle senses some movement or some activity around it where they, it deems it's intrusive in some fashion, um, it'll go ahead and, and start recording for you. So uh, be aware that you've got that feature in there, uh, super handy to have. While we're talking about the Sentry system, I think it's important that I note on there, if you, if you bring this into the Tesla dealer for service, uh, they're going to put it in service mode and that's going to lock you out of those Sentry features. It's basically going to stop your recordings from going while they're servicing the vehicle. So you should know that as well. The last thing I want to mention on here, all this information I'm giving you here today is available in your Tesla owner's manual. Now I know this is a lot more convenient to watch it in a video like this, but if you're interested in more of these details, Tesla has a pretty open source platform here when it comes to the owner's manual and it comes to the maintenance and the service procedures. A lot of this stuff they just give to you. So you don't have to have any fancy subscriptions like we do in the auto shop where we have to pay extra money for the information on how to repair the cars. Tesla likes to give you a lot of that stuff. So I recommend you dig around your owner's manual. On this particular vehicle, the owner's manual is available right through the, the tablet that's on the screen. So you can just access that if you're if you're sitting somewhere waiting for somebody, it's not a bad idea to read a little bit of that information, do some research, and it's always at your fingertips as well. If you're in a situation where you want to jumpstart the car, you can't remember what I told you in this video, how to do that. You can certainly look it up there on the display. It'll give you all the information. It's got some cool animations and even a couple of videos in there I found. So um, I would definitely recommend you take advantage of that resource. I want to thank you guys for following along with this channel. I hope you found this information that I've given you on this particular Tesla Model Y informative, educational, and hopefully useful in the event that you have some sort of an emergency. Please don't forget to share some of this information with your children, any passengers, occupants that you have in the vehicle with you. If you're liking this type of content, go ahead and check out some more. we got other videos right here for you. And we appreciate you liking and subscribing to the channel. It helps the channel grow. It helps us bring you more content like this.